well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to talk about a number of things tonight. Um, I really want to challenge us tonight. I'll be teaching us on the principles of effective living. Principles of effective living. Principles of effective living. Hallelujah. The difference. Can I have any two people here? Can come. Um, gentlemen can come. The difference between any two people. Watch this please everyone. The difference between any two people, the difference in the quality of their lives, the difference in the results that they command, the difference between their relevance as far as the program of God is concerned and the quality of their lives is principally dependent please listen not on their backgrounds necessarily not on their educational qualifications necessarily not on their connections necessarily the ultimate determinant of the quality of a man's life here on earth is his ideology your ideology you hear me teach this all the time. The principal determinant of the quality of your life here on earth is your ideology. I don't care what else you have. If you have an ideology that is not consistent with the ways of God, it's called the mind of Christ. If you can pay the price and get what the Bible calls the mind of Christ, then you are qualified to live life to its fullest based on the definition of heaven and even on the definition of earth. It's impossible to fail in life when you have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is God's ideology. The way he thinks, his perspective, 
his thought pattern and so through the teachings i know that we have a lot of impartations and all of that but impartations become irrelevant when there is no well-constructed channel that can permit them to find expression to the fullest the anointing of the holy spirit is like a dam your mindset is like the pipe that is properly channeled for its delivery are we together now no matter how anointed you are if your mindset the build up of your ideology is not well constructed so as to allow the fullness of heaven find expression through you your christian experience will still be buried irrespective of the dimension of god's glory that you carry so i want to start off tonight by talking to us about the excellency of a transformed mind we're going to talk about a number of things it's a training we're under serious training it's an apostolic and a prophetic training right the excellency the superiority of a transformed mind the bible tells us in romans chapter 12 when you read from verse 2 it says do not be conformed to this world the greek word here is aeon the thinking pattern the mindset that comes with this age do not allow yourself to come into alignment with that kind of ideology then he says but be transformed be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind permit it allow it allow your mind pass through a system a spiritual system that will edit you will upgrade you will prune you and bring you to a point where your mind you not only have the word of god but you become the expression of the living logos the word logos or the word um logos is not just the it's not written word it's from the word that conveys the thoughts of a man so when we say christ is the living logos the living word that means that jesus christ was the accurate expression of everything the father was thinking everything god was thinking jesus was living it out that's what made him the living logos and god's ultimate desire hear me god's desire ultimately is not for you to become a chief dispenser of revelation is that you become so full of the word that you become an epistle yourself your life becomes an expression of the living logos that your mindset your life is so aligned that you become an expression of the thought of god for you at time so god's ultimate desire is not to have exceptional preachers god's ultimate desire is to bring us to a point where there is such excellency in our ideologies these two gentlemen perceive life from different standpoints and the principal motivation that sponsors their perception is their mindset are we together now Bless you. your ideology i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and we, we touch on a few things that i taught them yesterday i just felt very um impressed in my spirit by the holy spirit to incorporate some of those things your ideology is the principal motivator of your responses the way you respond to life the way you respond to god please pay attention the way you respond to situations and circumstances are as a result of your mindset your ideology your mentality your ideology also sponsors your interpretation the way you interpret happenings in your life the way you interpret the occurrences the way you interpret success the way you interpret failure the way you interpret um, people the way you interpret god is a resultant effect of your mindset your ideology 
there are people for instance who are under a lot of pressure over their physical appearance dressing well um, getting a designer watch a designer cloth you know they are, they are so conscious about those things that consciousness is stimulated by an ideology is that true among other reasons an ideology that informs them that on the strength of wearing expensive things you are perceived to be valuable are we together now so that ideology stimulates a passion for one thing a lot of things there are people for instance who reject prosperity and embrace poverty because according to their ideology simplicity is the same as being poor so in a bid to respond to a desire to be simple are we are we together now they they reject anything that will make them blessed you are helplessly a slave of your ideology you are helplessly a slave of your ideology your life literally revolves along the plane of your ideology and therefore if god wants to step into your life and upgrade you if god wants to bring you to a point where you are so built that you allow his spirit the fullness of his essence to find expression in you then you must be able to submit to him and allow him to change your ideology our ideologies are built by many factors culture for instance I've, I've, I've taught that here you can get the teachings culture have shaped our mindsets culture have shaped our perceptions we see things from a particular vista in physics there's what we call refraction right I, I taught the school of ministry students yesterday and I felt a need to just bring that example there is what we call refraction when you when you study physics there's even what they call a refractive index is that true um, you have sorry those of us who are not science based I apologize but it's a very simple explanation that on the strength of having a glass block or anything of that nature you look through it and you can see an object it will appear in a distance and in a form that may not be the way it is originally and that is on the strength of what you are looking at let me use an example that all of us can relate with how many of you have seen cars that um, they write something little or the side mirror objects appear larger or smaller than they actually are is that true so the what you are looking at in that mirror is not exactly the way it is you may see it bigger than it really is or smaller than it really is are you getting the point now so your interpretation is based on your perception you must understand this to be successful in life you must rise to a point where you have what i call a superior ideology an ideology that is so aligned to the mind of christ many of us do not care about our ideologies and we labor in the place of prayer we labor in the place of fasting we assimilate the word and then there is such a bank of spiritual treasure but there is no platform for it to find expression because the realities of the spirit are, are like like power banks but they they are dependent on a transformed mind to fully find expression the degree to which you have the mind of christ is the degree to which you can allow heavenly things find expression through you this defines our possibilities in the kingdom hallelujah So you must realize that your ideology is very important. I keep challenging our ideologies because if your ideology does not change, nothing will change in your life, I guarantee you. Not even education will change you. Not marriage will change you. 
everywhere you go you go with your ideology anything you do you do from the standpoint of your ideology there are some of us for instance come if this gentleman look up please everyone if you can if this gentleman has an ideology of inferiority he feels very bad about himself it doesn't matter how he got that ideology did you know that if you look at this guy and say wow your suit is beautiful you're looking sharp he will interpret your commendation on the strength of his ideology and he will think it's a diplomatic way of mocking him is that true whereas that's supposed to be a, 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 a I mean a good commendation that he should receive with thanksgiving but then it comes and is interpreted on the lens of his ideology and he goes back hating you for doing something right are we together now our mindsets are very important many of us are fighting battles that do not exist today battles that our minds created many of us are hating people today who do not even know our minds created that hatred there are people under stress that should never be under stress there are people dying under high blood pressure preachers dying because there is a parameter that their ideology has put together i know men of god who suffer all the time harass members to try to bring congregations because to them they feel once you have a crowd like this is a representation of your anointing are we together now and so they get deceived and rather than focusing to build the people they do not know that in a congregation like this success is not measured generally you pick people one by one to ascertain the extent of the man of god's contribution to their life you can never generalize a successful congregation if you want to know how successful koinonia is you have to pick men at random and then speak to them on the matters of the kingdom and find out their individual degrees of comprehension when you gauge the average on their of their understanding it represents the extent of my teaching not the crowd are you seeing that now yeah i learned this early in life so there are pastors who are under pressure and that wrong ideology motivates them into thinking the more i bring in men of god from abroad the more i bring in this and that the more there are conferences the more there are conventions the more crowds will come responding sincerely but a slave to their ideologies there are pastors and pastor's wives who are so insecure if the pastor buys a particular kind of jeep nobody buys that kind of jeep again because his concept of honor is that you stand alone are we together now there are pastors who the moment they find out that other younger ministers their training are rising up they create a spiritual teaching that ensures that they remain at a level and never rise up are we together now so their ideology is informing the activities in their ministry there are pastors for instance who think respect and honor in ministry is when you see a man of god and then you lie down i'm, I'm not against uh, all of that but i used to know uh, um, one one very foolish pastor some years ago who made it a, a rule for his members to kneel down when they see him no no literally i'm not i'm not joking anywhere in the market in the rain once you see him coming you kneel down now now you see listen listen don't laugh there are still people doing it today there are churches where the man of god is so insecure the moment there is anything that looks like a coup against him they they go as far as even flogging members are we together now your life revolves around the quality of your ideology one person will be celebrating something and another one is destroying it because both of them are looking at the same thing from different perspectives and so as i challenge you every week part of the things that the holy ghost is doing is to be able to create a divorce between us and the ideologies that have kept us limited listen many of us think that to make spiritual men all you have to talk about is the seven rivers that are 
in heaven or the plane describing the things that are around the white throne. Believe me. Believe me when I tell you this. You don't build people that way. You must give people a holistic building that makes them capable in every ramification. The moment you teach people and your, your paradigm to them is lopsided, the limitation of your spiritual understanding reflects on them. Have you seen churches like that? Men of prayer, but broke people. They are reflecting the man of God's bias. He has refused to open them up to that dimension. Or you have a church where people are leaders. They are visionaries. They are businessmen. But they are carnal. They are not spiritual at all. They are excellent. They are exceptional. They are reflecting the bias of the man of God. And it's my job under God to make sure don't worry guys, please, except we have more people outside, but those here, I think they are, they are a lot comfortable in, so we don't have to bring them out. It's cold, so I don't think the heat is too much. Any asthmatic patient, you are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So you must challenge yourself to contend for an excellent mindset. It is lack of an excellent mindset that makes, for instance, men of God fight themselves. Because they think respect in ministry or in the kingdom based on their mindset is when you stand alone and outshine others. Are we together now? And so the more a man of God stands in a class where he sustains the capacity to outshine others. Right? And so we compare ourselves with ourselves and the Bible says whoever does that is not wise. The question now, before we even start is, are you willing to submit your mindset to be changed? Listen, I really cannot help you if you are unwilling, if you are, un, if you are not malleable enough for your mindset to be transformed. I made a decision years ago, and that decision still stands. Anything that is not going to contribute to me, manifesting the fullness of the life and the power of God, serving the Lord with all my heart and blessing my generation, is not worth my pursuit. I will dump it. Including friendships, including ideologies about ministry. If this for me, given by God, represents the highest level of ministry, and this is the dimension that will produce the greatest efficiency in my life, then I do not want to improve. I want to stay here for the sake of that optimal delivery. You must be this passionate about God and you must be passionate enough to submit your mind. Like, like you carry a cloth and you give a dry cleaner. You say, please go and walk on this cloth. Walk on it. How many of you have seen them repaint a car? You've seen them, you know, how, uh, uh, what they call them? The painters, the car painters now. They first take it to a workshop. Is that true? In a bid to paint that car, they can dismantle everything. The lights. Momentarily, the, the, the aesthetics of the car will have to um, be forgotten for a while. You have to remove the bulbs. Remove everything. You have to take away the tires. You have to get all of these things and put together. And then you start spraying. And when you spray, you find out that there are little things. You have to fix up everything. But the moment you are done and you bring out that car, the value increases. That's what God is doing to us. And so you must submit yourself to learn. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lay your hands on your head and pray for one minute and say, Lord, everything inside this head that needs to change must change. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of keeping things in my mind that are responsible for authorizing darkness in my life. I'm tired of holding on to ideologies that are keeping me poor, keeping me powerless, keeping me uh, in lack of character. I am tired of holding on to precepts and ideologies that are making me fail. I am truly, truly determined. Lord, I authorize you to edit my mind. 
change my ideologies Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 1. Very quickly, let's start. We're going to talk about four different areas very quickly. This was a preparatory teaching just to get our minds together. Proverbs chapter 1, we'll read from verse 3 and 4 and then we'll commence the teaching. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 1, 3 and 4. If you are there, say amen. Let's be fast. It says to receive the instruction of wisdom, righteousness, justice, and equity. Verse 4, it says to give prudence to the simple, the young man knowledge and discretion. Let's read it to verse 5. A wise man will hear and he will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In other words, he was telling us the motivation behind the writing of the book of Proverbs. That this is the motivation. That every time people who are inclined to wisdom hear it, it will increase them in learning. Hallelujah. I want to challenge your understanding first and foremost about life. Write that word down. Your understanding about life. Let's look at the concept of life and living very briefly. I am trusting that God will challenge us and improve the quality of our living. There are certain things you need to know about life for you to live effectively. Number one, life is a gift. Life is a trust. It's important that you are, if you are alive and under the sound of my voice, you realize this. Life is a gift. It doesn't matter whether you acknowledge the giver or not. Life is a gift. Secondly, life is a trust. What is a trust? A trust is something that is committed to you. Right? And accountability will be required of it. If you do not know that life is a gift, and if you do not know that life is a trust, then you can live anyhow. When a man takes a bottle of liquor, beer, and just gulps everything, he is expressing his ignorance about understanding that this life is a gift. Statistics, brothers and sisters, tells us, I don't know if it's an old statistic, I, don't, I really don't know what is the current statistics now. But as at the last time I checked, it said eight people die per second. How many people? Eight people die per second from the time we began this service till now you can calculate how many people have died and these people have not died just because they are not christians or they are backsliders pastors have been among them all kinds of things this year for instance one of our sisters transited to glory one who had committed herself serving very faithfully in the ministry was a time of grief for us but we rejoiced because she left with an understanding knowing that life is a gift and she spent her life serving the king let me tell you right now if no one has told you the life that you have is a gift life is also a trust the meaning of that is that one day the real owner of that life will make he will demand accountability for the use of that life. Drunkard, smoker, gambler, thief, terrorist, preacher, good husband, foolish man, wise man, it doesn't matter. Life is a trust. Look, this should, this should, this should bring a sense of reverence to you. That you are not ultimately, um, you are not the ultimate custodian of your life. You are only a steward of it. It's like a trust, right? It's like a grant. How you give somebody 10,000 naira and you say, start this business. I give you access, but it's not your own. I can call on you at every time to find out what you have done. And it is within my power to withdraw the grant if I see you misusing it. 
that revelation that your life is a trust alone will sponsor a sense of seriousness will sponsor a sense of godliness are we together and will sponsor a sense of urgency as you live your life the way people live their lives especially young people obviously shows that they are not aware first that life is a gift you watch people come back from a party they come back and they are drunk and the guy is on high speed and he takes one leg and puts it on top of the uh, uh, what do you call it the steering and the guy is just speeding and the ladies in the car are laughing they are saying don't speed and the guy is trying to impress them it's because they are not aware that in one minute that gift can live the rich fool forgot this he built bands and kept it together and said my soul find rest and he said you are a foolish man this night today your soul will be required are we together now very important koinonia you must understand that if you woke up alive this morning and you are here listening to me there is someone who gave you that life only a fool will say in his heart there is no god no matter how stubborn you are you do not know where the wind you breathe comes from. You have never tried to find out where does the wind store itself. When you sleep in the night, you have never tried to find out where you go to. All you know is that you get up in the morning and you yawn around. But between your time of sleep and your time of waking up, someone was watching you. Are we together? And then you wake up with that arrogance. Kai, I'm happy. To go and look for trouble again and the one who gave you the life is watching and the clock of your destiny is ticking and the devil beguiles you into thinking it does not matter oh it does don't let any man deceive you it does oh i'm going to challenge you are we together now the consciousness that life is a trust alone will make you not to get up and intentionally want to destroy another life are we together now now don't feel bad for those of you who have had all kinds of past we are not talking about that the blood of jesus has washed it but then i'm not necessarily talking of things like abortion and the rest when somebody gets up and he says i like this girl sam leave her alone she's my girl and you carry knife to prove your your passion and the fire that is burning inside your soul that loss and you stab some and divide him into two and then you bounce around and you are going to feel sleepy in the night look at only a man that does not sleep has a right to claim he is a custodian of his life because after everything you do i will wake up and i promise you i will deal with you foolish man and he goes to sleep for six hours he does not know what can happen and then he wakes up and remembers that he planned to kill somebody then he goes to do it again and then he returns tired and he sleeps and he does that for 10 years 20 years and the real owner is just watching he knows your name he knows your every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears you when i call life is a gift life is a trust and let me tell you something life has a reason there is a reason why everyone is alive. Whether you know it or not, if there is a restaurant and you do not know there is a restaurant, it doesn't stop the fact that there is food going on there. Is that true? That you are ignorant of the fact that the building you just passed is a restaurant does not mean they will stop cooking because of your ignorance. There is a reason why God kept you alive. You shot yourself with all kinds of injections, but there is a reason why God kept you alive. While you are smoking, you go and doing everything, there is a reason 
why God kept you alive. Are we together? While you're gulping Tatalin, there is a reason why you are alive. Everyone who wants to maximize his life and living must be able to realize that the ultimate purpose of life is to, or the ultimate wisdom as far as living is concerned, is to spend your life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. Any man that spends his time and his life doing this is a wise man. That you spend the entire lifespan of your life first and foremost realizing that there is a God in heaven. Oh, listen, listen. God consciousness is a key to effective living. The realization that there is God, that, that concept, that understanding that there is one who is above me. There are people on earth who are stubborn. They don't listen to parents. There are people who are stubborn. They don't listen to the law. There are people who are hardened capons. They are occultists. They are criminals. But there is, there is a God that sits in the heavens. And he watches over the affairs of men. You must live with that God consciousness. That the purpose of your living is to commit your entire life serving the Lord and being a blessing to humanity. He told Abraham in Genesis 12, when you read 1 and 2, he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth, not be cursed, be blessed. If you want to live life to its fullest, you must live with eternity in view. Eternity in view. That no matter the quality of your life on earth, you realize that is only like a measuring tape. Listen, the, 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 the concept of eternity is something that if, if you do not keep reminding yourself, you will live a wasted life here on earth. I guarantee you, whether as a preacher, as just a, a citizen living in the world, a day will come when what we know as existence will be folded like a carpet. Are we together now? And that time is not too far from now. Whether you believe it or not, you must witness it. For sure. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that death is a mirage? There really is nothing. Death like cessation of living. No. Men don't stop living. They only exit this realm. The question has never been, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is location. Not that you, you are going to spend eternity for sure. The question is what? Location. So when you live your life with eternity in view, knowing that all this one that I insult people and abuse people, a day will come, this life will be folded like a curtain. Those who are old people now, 70 years, 80. Do you know there was a time they were teenagers? And to them, they felt there was time. But you turn and see them now. All they have to tell you is a legacy of what they did with their own life. I can remember when I went to JS1. I remember clearly one iron box. My father went to go and bring one old box. They repainted it because he didn't want them to boggle it. Heavy box, you can't carry it alone. Yeah. Very clearly. We were going together with my colleagues. They were all crying, missing home. My excitement leaving home knew no bounds. I was happy. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I couldn't believe I was going to leave my father. Today, we'll only laugh about it. But back then, it was serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
the same way some of you are sitting down here you will open your eyes and find out that your son is graduating from the university as a doctor and he said please tell me i'm lying i was in koinonia yesterday no you were in koinonia 30 years ago 50 years ago 60 years ago life is very brief deceptfully brief life is deceptfully brief and if you don't come into that recognition and that realization that 80 years is not such a big time 120 years is not such a big time compared to eternity eternity minus 120 years is what James chapter 4 verse 14 this is just the first shot there are one two three four four of this that God is going to give us like a penicillin to really help us James 4 okay James 4 14 Are we there? Okay, let me read. Whereas ye know not what shall be the next day. He was talking. Let's start reading from verse 13 so that you see the context. 13. Come now, ye that say today or tomorrow we shall go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. 14. Whereas ye know not what shall happen the next day. For what is your life? The apostle is teaching us now. It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. Listen, let me tell you the truth. James really meant what he was saying. I've seen this thing in the realm of the spirit. When you are caught up in the realm of the spirit and you look at earth, you will see it like a vapor. What you call reality is a vapor compared to the realm of the spirit. literally like smoke that will soon vanish you know how when you set a paper on fire smoke just comes and in less than one minute it's gone that's what happens that's why the bible says a thousand years in earth's time is like a day before god one thousand years is like a day before god so from the day you were born till now it's still god's today So when you stand up and say, I'm not your mate, in heaven, it's still today. While you are warning people and saying, let me tell you, it's still today. From the day you are born till the day you die, from heaven's view, it's called what? So every time God says today, he knows what he's saying. To you, you think it's tomorrow. Your tomorrow is in God's today. Bless me and see what I will become, they say we are in today we are already seeing what you will become listen when you know this you will truly serve god in truth that's what makes him an all wise god his system of timing is amazing 1000 years to one day so when a preacher starts ministry and 10 years later on he has left god and he said lord bless me they are still watching the movie in today. I want you to fast forward life. And you will see the foolishness of men. If there is a way you can record a man's one week. And play that one week in a one hour video. You will know that we are really foolish as we live. All of a sudden you see a man coming to beg. Then the video fast forward, you see him stealing. Then later on, you see him apologizing. Then you see him trying to look for another man's wife. Then you see him do something and you're like, my goodness, is this what we do? That's what we do all the time. You need to live in God's realm of today to see how foolish we live in this life. Is God helping us? If you want to live life to its fullest, you must be guided by three things. Number one, the fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience 
Number three, a sense of posterity. Those who live like fools are those who ignore this. Any man who is living to make the most of his life must live with a sense of the fear of the Lord. One. Number two, conscience. Number three, posterity. Psalms 90 verse 12. Let's rush there. Psalms 90 verse 12. Very popular scripture. Psalms 90 verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to pay attention day by day as we live. Let us pay attention to our lives. And the Bible says we will apply our hearts unto wisdom. That means if you number your day, and I'm telling you the best time to number your day is during your birthday. Where you sit down. It's not just the time to eat cake and talk. It's the time to sit down. And say my goodness. I was 36 years last year. I'm 37 years now. What does that mean? If I'm spending 120 years on earth. 120 minus 36. This is how long I have to live. What Have I justified living 36 years? Oh, I am 50 years. Everybody is saying congratulations. Golden Jubilee, midlife crisis. How many more years do I have to live? Can I justify the 50 years of living? Your heart has been pumping for six years, for 50 years. It, it kept pumping and you were just using the energy it sent to you to do nonsense for 50 years. There must be a change. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there must be a change. For you to live effectively, you must focus on the things that matter. One of the deceptive things that people do that robs them from effective living is that they major on minor things and they minor on major things. We spend all our time and energy on things that from heaven's perspective are considered minor. Then we give very little attention to the things that we would want to call major. Whereas from heaven's perspective. Or from, that we call minor. Whereas from heaven's perspective. They are major things. Is God speaking to us? I'll give you an instance. When someone gets up. And his whole obsession in life. Is money. Marriage. House. Car. That, that's everything that drives his life. Oh, I must have a car. I must have a house. That person is majoring on minor things. Whereas the nobler things in life, like your service and your commitment, your testimony and your track record that you love God, the sacrifices, your commitment in the house of God, the things that you have done on account of your faith, the lives that you changed, the destinies that came to know the Lord Jesus Christ because you were born. We minor on those things. And so this is what we do. One day we just challenge ourselves and say, three days we are going to be on evangelism. Are you ready? Yes. Then we now go out. And everybody is moving out. And you just block somebody and say, do you know that Jesus is coming soon? Yes. I am testy. The person now says I'm testy. You now bring him to the church and he sits down and then you never have a passion for souls again. It was, just, it was just a church calendar activity to fulfill all righteousness. You went out for two or three days. One, one or two people. People who are even, some of them were already born again. You forced them to say the salvation prayer and wrote their names and brought the booklet and said, Pastor, please take your rubbish. I got people born again. The passion is not genuine. How many people have as a major passion for souls. I'm not just talking of getting people born again, but seeing lives and destinies changed. These are the major things in life. What of a testimony? Look at what the Bible says. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. How many people are interested in that kind of business? 
the business of laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. That when you go to heaven, there's, there's that song can, can reduce the key. Tossed that, that Anglican song, remember? Only remembered for what we have done. Play it, Mike. Some of you don't know it. Learn it. Very good song. It's a song that makes you think about your life. When you are living carelessly, it just calls you down. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling only remembered by what we have done only remembered only remembered only remembered by what we have done thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling A strange man in the Bible listen the seventh man from creation the Bible calls him Enoch this is all that the Bible tells us about Enoch never tells us how many wife or wives he married never told us how many cathedrals he built this is what the Bible says and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him only one more time in Scripture we see his prophecy a man who lived so long and the summation of his existence is that he panted after God in all his life. What a testimony. If all there is in your testimony, your epitaph, when you die, the troublemaker has gone. Finally, peace returns to planet Earth. How about that? Let me tell you something. God is my witness. It is never my desire that if Christ tarries and I depart from this world, my ultimate pursuit is not to be associated with mundane things. He started this, he started that, he started koinonia, he started this. All those things are rubbish as far as I'm concerned. All I want to know is how many lives can say, I am a life that was changed. That's the major. The house you built, the suit you died in, does not matter. It's a minor. But you are almost killing your tailor because of it. You are majoring on the mind. I am so glad you came. Yeah. That at the end of my life, somebody can stand and say, it was because of Joshua Selman that I came. Not even in my death. That's the greatest testimony today. If you like, bring one million naira and say, man of God, the grace of God upon your life is like from earth to heaven. I'll just be listening to you. But if you want to turn me on, just tell me how God has used my life to change you. Sir, do you know that I used to be this and that? But see what the Lord has used koinonia messages. I, I can go back shedding tears. If you give me a plot of land, if you give me a car, thank God for those things. But I tell you sincerely, those things are mundane to me. My passion and my desire is to see how much I can have a testimony before my God and my creator that I spent my life serving him as a gratitude to this gift of life that he gave me. Second, that I can be able to be an extension of his influence to contribute my own quota to preparing his army and bring as many people. My desire. My desire. Is to sing your praise to the ends of the earth That we one mighty voice Every tribe and tongue rejoices Our hearts and our desire is to see the nations worship. This is why I sleep. This is why I wake up. This is why I eat. This is why I hate poverty. 
this is why I hate the devil this is why I love people this is my motivation to be able to serve the Lord that's why my secret place is my greatest asset not ministry I love my secret place more than invitations to minister and whatever no 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 I love it more than a phone call that can change my life forever because when all is said and done and this world fades like a shadow there is only one track record well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into my rest when was the last time you thought about this if you thought about this you would have withheld your mouth from blaspheming a man of god or gossiping about a roommate or a worker some of these excesses find expression in our lives when we forget is God helping us? You must focus on people if you want to live effectively. You must focus on your assignment. Focus on your business. There are people who live their lives and all you are doing is involving yourself with other people's business. You have your own life to live and your time is short. If God gave you 80 years to spend on earth and you spend 60 years escorting other people in destiny, and then you don't even know why you were born. You don't know anything about your life. Let me just shift this. If you are here and you are seated listening to me. And you really cannot tell me in one sentence why you are alive. You do not know. It's a serious reason. It is worth it to go for a retreat. And say, Lord, why am I here? I'm tired of clapping for other people's vision. I'm tired of clapping for other people's destiny. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me to do your will. Not everybody will be a pioneer of a ministry. Not everybody will be a man of God. But even if you are serving in ministry, you should be able to know what your assignment is there and commit yourself. This is the ideology you must have about life this is the first subject we are dealing with tonight about life these are facts of life that you must know you must live with eternity in view as you go back go and take an inventory on your life what are the things that i spend my 24 hours doing separate them into two majors and minor you will be surprised to see how much of your time you give to the major things the things that matter that matter we can spend seven hours sitting and daydreaming about rubbish we can spend 10 hours watching movies and films and there's nothing wrong with that but learn to major on the major and minor on the minor by the time you switch them your life is going to be vanity I will never spend my time on something that does not weigh in the scale of eternity i will never waste my time it has nothing to do with me being a preacher you will never see me sit down gossiping about people talking about another man's ministry tearing down people that's not my business there is an urgency the king's business requires haste there is a lot i have i have too many things on my mind to do there are souls to save. There are sick bodies to heal. There are devils to cast out. They must fly out of people's bodies into where they came from. There are lives that must be changed. There are impartations that must happen to people. I occupy my life doing that. There are songs to write. There are visions to bring. There are revelations to bring to the body. There's too much to occupy me. To waste my life in bitterness and anger and all of and this this competitive thing people do around please get out of that thing occupy don't let satan give you a job that god did not give you are we blessed oh so teach us to number our days i want you to leave this place tonight with a new paradigm about life this is a better revelation than just legalistically trying to tell people stop this stop that stop sin when you give them a revelation about the reality of life the fact that it is a gift and a trust it will compel them to think and say what am i doing with my life 
as you go back home, go and sit down and think about your life. If you've never done it, please switch off your phone and just sit down. Or wake up in the middle of the night and just sit down. And say, where am I going to? Okay, I'm 35. I'm 45. I'm 50. I'm 20. I'm 17. I'm 10. What am I doing with my life? Number two. The second discussion that we are going to be looking at, I want to teach you an understanding about people. If you want to live effectively, you must understand people. These keys I'm teaching you will make you master effective living. You will live so effectively. Your understanding about people. There are certain things you need to know about people for you to live effectively. If you do not know this, you will fail bitterly in life. Ready? Number one is what I call the fundamental principles of human relation. The fundamental principle of human relation. As far as dealing with people, we're on another subject now. Understanding about people. We've looked at understanding about life. Your understanding about people is an ideology that needs to change for you to live effectively. Write this down. I will keep drumming it to your head till you get it. The highest psychological need, this is what I call the fundamental principle of human relations. The highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, and the need to feel important. Any man, Christian, Muslim, atheist, Buddhist, the follower of Baha'i, Confucius, whatever, all the religions in the world. Every man today living on the surface of the earth has an inner craving. The greatest psychological craving of any man is the need to be loved, the need to be valued, and the need to feel important. The moment you live your life violating this law, you are going to go through a lot of struggles with people. Are we together now? Um, let me use, Amaka, come. Let me use you. Anybody, come. These are two people. Where are you from? Nambra State. Nambra, where are you from? Delta State. Delta. This is Anambra. This is Delta. I need somebody from the north. North? Be sure you are from the north. Don't just stand up and... Okay, yeah, Sam, you can come. Watch this. You can, you can stay here. These people have diverse cultures. Diverse ways of living. But can I tell you the truth? Embedded in every one of them. From Delta, from Anambra, from Kaduna State. Embedded in every one of them, they crave for it, they will fight for it. Is the ultimate determinant of their attachment to people the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued. Everybody wants to feel loved. That sense of love, that sense of value. You know what it means to be valued? I've told us, but write it again. To be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable. That's what it means to be valued. By the time you live your life and you master degrading people and trivializing their worth, you become an enemy to effective living. So if I live my life, watch this. If every time I meet Amaka, all I keep doing to her is to make her feel she's of no worth. Are you getting the point now? I keep making her feel bad. I keep making her feel you are a nobody. You are a non-entity. Let me tell you something. She will hate me. She will fight me. She will resent me. Every time I am coming towards her, I become a reflection of pain. Are you getting me? Every time people are celebrating her and she sees Joshua Selman coming, she will hate it. She will leave that environment. Are you getting the point now? Because my presence 
is always derogatory to her person. If I meet this guy right now and I look, I say, I'm richer than you. You are nothing. I push him away and make him look like you have to earn certain things to belong to my class. And I push him away. I devalue him. Are we together? I make him not feel important. The danger of that is that I will never be able to be friends with him. Some of you can never have friends and by extension husbands and wives because your attitude violates the fundamental principle of relationships. Your presence always makes people feel they are nothing. There's something about your ideology that mocks you trivialize the efforts of people. There are ladies like that. Every time you see another lady, you cannot see what is nice. There is a beautiful flower. Your eyes cannot see it. This is a lady that is beautiful. You can't see it. You just look and say, Kai, is this shirt iron or not? Why must your life tilt towards devaluing people? That sense of cynicism is destroying your potential for effective living. You must train yourself to always make people feel love. When I come to Sam and I say, Sam, I love you. You are a great person. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. And when Sam is trying to say, ah, no, I'm not qualified to be to your class. I say, Sam. If there is nothing that is common to all of us, we were all made from dust. There is a common ground. And I love you. You don't need to do anything to end my love. I appreciate you. I know you are growing. And I make Sam feel important. When he sings, I say, Sam, there is an anointing on you. I know I'm anointed, but I cannot but acknowledge the grace upon you. Do you think Sam will want to be around me? Because anytime he's around me, that sense of value is on there are many of you brothers you have destroyed the lives of sisters because every time you see them you are, your, your mouth is like a razor blade you tear people down Kai this girl true true let's tell the truth she's not fine Kai you may be laughing as if you you are fine see it there are brothers like that and some are, are, are audacious this is a lady who is trying to gather herself what like a broken plate her emotional her em, the emotional self worth of her of her person is fragile she's gone through a family that did not believe in her now she came to koinonia or to any um congregation of god's people and she's hoping she will find a place where she can heal and be strong and one arrogant carnal brother now comes to smash that thing on the ground and says, I'm telling you to your face, you are anointed, oh, I won't deny that one. But find it now. You are, you are, you know. Thank you. If that is part of your life, you are not living effectively. Because the reason why somebody is dying is because you are alive and God is watching. God is watching. You cannot come and destroy God's precious creation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. Never make people feel bad when you are there. No. You live effectively when you understand this component of people. Sisters, may God give you a husband who thinks like this. Somebody who you come back home and he can appreciate you. When you cook, he doesn't look and say, why is there four meat? I thought you used to put five. He said, no, I thank God. I just came back from somewhere and my husband's wife beat him. I thank God for a woman like you. Never giving me a headache. And she's saying, I'm sorry. I shouted at you that day. Say, no, we are humans. Not that you're a bad man. You say, yes, you shouted. No. If you understand people, let me tell you, you will become a people magnet. It will be like charm. You become desirable by even your enemies because you have sustained the component that attracts people the, the excellency of your ideology is such that everyone wants to be like you why is everybody running away from you it may be because there is something about your life 
Are we together now? You think they are running away because you are poor. Not necessarily. Trust me, not necessarily. There is something about your life that violates their sense of self-worth. I need you to serve. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Very important. Bless you. Bless you. You greet people. When you come, you greet people. They don't just come and say, Apostle, how are you? Say, eh, I'm fine. Courtesy. Are we together? The highest psychological need of man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel important. The second thing you need to know about people to live effectively. Ready? You must be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man. Oh, I teach you wisdom tonight. Be aware of the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature of man. Expect people to change. Expect people to change. Whether for the good or for the worst. If you do not factor this, you will die of hypertension as you live in your life. <laughs> hmm. Expect people to change. Factor this as you deal with people. How many people come back with shock? I used to know this lady when she was nothing. Very humble, very loving. Now because she bought BMW X series, now she's arrogant. Expect people to change incorporate it so that you are never shocked there are few things about people that surprise me because i factor it there are people who used to greet me years ago they will see me and greet me but now i see them and you see there's this unconscious i'm also a man of god now and i just see them as i expected it carry your wahala there's one song owner of evil load carry your load now i don't mean that for you but I mean, come on. I reject any load that God didn't give me. Carry your wahala, your mindset, and your village, whatever, go with it. I don't want trouble. Our not understanding that change is something to be expected, even in people, is what surprises us. So as at the time you asked the lady out, she was a charming, sleeping beauty. Lovely lady. She would greet you. It was because she was not exposed now some exposure has come and one day she challenges you and you say me when did you change if you don't factor it you will die like mere men how how many times do we expect people to remain the way we've always known them let me tell you if you want to live effectively incorporate this people are inconsistent they are ever changing somebody will say i love you today Tomorrow he will say crucify him. Let it not shock you. Factor it and you will be free. So that if your best friend today turns and stabs you at the back. I, 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 some, some years ago I managed one issue. One guy liked one lady, one good Christian lady. And there was one middle man who was trying to process the whole relationship. And in the process of trying to uh, do the procession, I don't know how the thing worked. And the guy started, you know, was possessing his canine for himself and so on and so forth. And he found out that they were spending time together and the returns that would have come from the whole, I mean, the guy was not, nothing was happening. And at a point, he just said, look, this lady says she doesn't like you, long and short. I've just been afraid of telling you, but now see it, as hot as it is. And then a few weeks, they were all going out. And then, of course, you can imagine how that relationship too will end. Praise the Lord. But the idea is that, when was the last time some of you listen as you are sitting down right here you are bitter and you are depressed because people changed your father changed when his salary came when his arrears of 10 years came no more prayers remember when people used to come and pray they forced you to wake up in the night and do night vigil you killed everything flying around your house till that money came when it arrived your father became himself he apologized to the family if I've offended anybody, if that's what is stopping the money, I apologize. And you were convinced, my goodness, daddy has changed. All of a sudden, the money came and you found out there is no change that has happened. Listen, learn this about people and you will win. 
the inconsistencies and the ever-changing nature man the only thing that god guaranteed about man is that he will change people change when they are under pressure that's why let me tell you something i say this thing especially because we are predominantly young people when you see somebody that thing you call love at first sight be careful because if you say you love me have you seen me when i'm angry have you seen me when i'm hungry do you know whether it's not do you know whether i'm dirty when you say you love me means you love everything about me oh i love you i love you calm down my mother is a witch i love you i love you like that calm down our our refusal to understand people listen i'm giving you wisdom that will guarantee your reigning you will live effectively know that people change are you getting what i'm saying now how many pastors expect their subordinates not to change and they say i know you you are like a son to me you came into this church as an armed robber see what god used my anointing to do in your life and you are the very person who wants to divide my church into half <laughs> people must change for the good or for the worst I have factored this in my life let me tell you there is almost nothing anybody around me does that surprises me i may just be alarmed what kills people what causes high blood pressure is the shock the shock i didn't expect this person to change come on <laughs> i give you a key that will make you live effectively are you learning this When you expect people to change and you factor it, you are never surprised. That means when you are designing your life, you design it incorporating the fact that people can change. That way, you will never trust any human being above God, no matter what they tell you. I will fall inside the well for you. I will, a train will kill me for you. You are talking nonsense. Let an arm robber knock the door. You will see the ever-changing nature and the inconsistencies of people. There are pastors that before they got money, they were preaching certain messages. Is that true? When money came, business class, first class, five-star hotel. Ah! They said, so life can be lived at a higher level. And that thing altered their messages. And the members say, Kai, I'm disappointed. Don't be disappointed. People change. Walk out with this today. And you can shake hands with your best friend who stabbed you at the back and say i know i offended you and you laugh you say i've learned to factor in the ever changing nature so when a guy walks to you somebody who says if i don't marry you just come and carry my dead body and two weeks later he says i'm not doing again you will start asking him what happened what is on your head people change so you factor it in your heart listen this is the antidote to consistent disappointment. I will give you a job. What level are you now? 400 level. I promise you, I'm now the DG of this and that. And then you come after that time and say, even your father have not given him a job. Talk more of it. Walk out of this office. And you say, ah, ah. All the while, when they are prophesying in miracle service, you never drop prayer requests of job. Because to you, you think it's a done deal that man promised me and we are saying don't put your strength in man you are not hearing until he sends you away you will rush with the prayer request and come and drop it oh god a job listen i will never trust man above god never i don't care what my father your father may let you down your mother your best friend What's the other part? But Jesus. That's right. Your boss. Your lecturer. Your project. But Jesus. Your certificate. Your husband. Nigeria. Hallelujah. 
understand the inconsistencies and the ever changing nature of men. This is the key to not living in bitterness. I, I love this person so much and he went behind me and stabbed my back. Factor it and rest. Jesus never said on the cross, disciples, where are you? You left me. He didn't have time for that. John, thank you for coming. Take care of my mother for me. He never woke up and said, you, Peter. <laughs> you, uh, um, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, you that I saw you close to a tree. No, that's what many of you do. Number three, under understanding people. You must understand what I call the motivation of the natural man. If you want to live with people, you must know what motivates the natural man. And I want to tell you now, there are three things that motivate the natural man. Fear, greed, and self-centeredness. Factor that as you live with people. The natural man is only driven by three things. One, fear. Two, greed. Three, self-centeredness. Mm. If you don't know this, you will be deceived. The concept of celebrity really does not exist. People only celebrate you to the degree to which they found something in your life that is valuable to them. The day they don't find it, they will dump you for the next thing. The natural man is motivated friendship in the world fraternities and associations are ultimately motivated by fear by greed and by self-centeredness watch this i taught the school of ministry three kinds of people with respect to there are three categories of people in life with respect to relationships and let me just bring it out and teach us watch this the first category of people that you will relate with in your life are those who don't love you or love you believe in you clap for you only because of what you carry not who you are they don't love you because of who you are they love you because of what you have that they need so desperately so your presence represents the availability of that thing so they keep loving you for the sake of what they want are you getting what I'm saying now When you see an anointed man and you run around him and say you are anointed, you really do not love him. You only love what his presence brings in your life. The day, I was telling the school of ministry students, the day we do two koinonia services and you don't sense any anointing, you sense the service go bad. Many of you say, I said it. Hey, the charm, the charm has scattered. How many, listen, how many of you seated here, if I'm preaching right now, and in your presence, a charm, God forbid, but let's assume that I'm carrying a real charm and it just falls out here. Let me tell you, some of you who shouted, I love you, Joshua Selman, you are my father, you are my mother, you are my uncle, you are all of this. At once, at once, you are the ones who go and call the police and say something is wrong. Let's, let's join the president in fighting corruption <laughs> in Nigeria. Ninety percent of the people who will come to your life, who will love you and call you names, only love what you carry, not you. If you are not aware of this, the crowd will deceive you. When men clap for you, they are clapping for what you carry that they need. Even if you still have it, the day they don't need it, you will dump it. Look at what we have done for Nitel. Nitel that labored for Nigeria for many years. Look at what we have done to railway. Look at what we have done to typewriters. Look at what we have done to cafes. Look at what we have done to Nokia 3310. That's an example. There was a time that represented our obsession. It's the same thing you will do to your Android device in the next 10 years. It's the same thing you will do to your tab. You will throw it away. Young children like this don't even know what a typewriter is. Whether electric or manual, they don't know it. 
Are we together? Yeah. So when you see people celebrating you, don't get carried away that they're admiring you. You say, I'm a superstar. Joking. Joking. You are only a commodity that is desperately needed. And people are leeching on you to eat their pound of flesh while they can. For as long as what you carry is needed by them, they will keep loving you. The first category of people you meet. Many of us are under deception right now. That's what I teach the leaders. I hear many of you come and greet. And, and, and I'm not saying you should do it. Oh, I want to thank my father, Apostle Joshua Selman, and I'm just looking at you while you are saying it. I want to appreciate the head of the department, prayer band, and everybody shouting, Ooh. the day you try to get people filled with the Holy Spirit, and you lay hands and lay your legs and nothing happens. They'll start saying, this department is like we're backsliding. The, the prayer, the anointing on this department is not as strong as it used to be before. Gradually, gradually. Listen, when you know this, you will celebrate people, but you will learn to love yourself because ultimately you are your biggest fan. At least you are the one that trusts yourself. By the time you stop loving yourself and allow people to love you, the day they leave, you will die of loneliness. Job was left alone. And he said, I know my Redeemer lives at home. I've lost everything. But I will love myself. Many of us are here right now. How many of you started fellowships and started groups? Or maybe were pastors of fellowships. And as at the time you were working with the people, most of the people you were grooming and building were not spiritual people. But now all of them have revelation. And everybody pushes you away and you are feeling disappointed. There's no throne for you again. My brother, save yourself headache. I'm giving you freedom. Go and find a way of motivating yourself and keep loving God. For as long as people see something in you that they want. I asked the school of ministry students a question and I'm going to ask you to prove that the love of man is sensual and carnal. How many of you tell me the name of two imbeciles you can remember? Ready? Those are the ones that have nothing to offer to you. You can't even remember their face. When was the last time when you visited them in charity, you only visited them to show the world you are doing well, you are all of that. They poured saliva on you, thank God. How long can you endure that? You just endured it for the moment. That's to prove to you our love is principally self-centered. Number two, the second category of people you will meet in your life are those who do not love you. Don't confuse this. The first category, they love you. They celebrate you. But the motivation is for themselves. The second category, they don't love you. They don't believe in you. But because there is an enemy they have to confront and they need your cooperation to destroy that bigger enemy. They will come into a momentary partnership with you to help them fight that bigger enemy. When the enemy is defeated, they return to themselves. Are we together? A funny example. During crisis, post-election violence or religious crisis, how many of you love people that smoke ego? How many of you love people that do this? But the moment there is crisis, what happens? Because those guys are the ones who put the headband and go to fight for Christians. You now motivate them and say, my children, go. <laughs> do you love them? No. Do you believe in them? No. But there is now a bigger enemy. You don't care their church. In fact, sometimes you even give them some money and say, hey, take minerals. You know what they will do with that money. But you are saying, take minerals, right? And you tell them, please, as you are protecting, come around my house, make sure that everything is working well. Do you love them? No. Do you believe in them? You have warned them two weeks before the crisis. They should not come near your house. You will shoot them if you see them. Now, because you are afraid that a bigger enemy will kill you, you are now using them momentarily to help you fight that bigger enemy. And afterwards, you will hate them back. When you want to move to a new place, a new house, you want to find out, are there Christians there? Now, you may hate Catholics. You may hate Anglicans. You may hate Pentecostals. But because you want to be at least in a place of safety, you now say, are they Christians? You don't know what, what they believe. If they say, your neighbor is a Christian, the other one is a Christian, you say, ah, I'm happy. 
immediately you enter that problem has been solved now you hear this guy praying in the night you say mr man i'm here i will warn you you it's your church that prays like that continue you see that the difference has come you needed them momentarily do you understand what i'm saying now how many people come into partnership with you just because they want to fight a bigger enemy i've seen people who don't love me they don't believe in me they many of them may have said a lot of things about me but when certain inevitable diseases came upon their lives oppressions they saw people appearing day and night and telling them you would die they tried everything they would do right and then they would now come and you see them say man of god honestly kai may god bless you you are doing a serious work and i can discern that these people they will be the people to stab me but because there is a bigger enemy they need to come into partnership with my anointing and solve the problem after which they return back to their mood if you do not know this about people you will be deceived you will suddenly see your enemy at peace with you he's at peace with you because there is a bigger enemy learn this and be wise are we together the third category of people that you will meet in your life are those who will love you for who you are they will die with you they love you more than your money they love you more than your anointing they will be the last sets of people to give up on you brothers and sisters let me tell you something i told the school of ministry students yesterday and they were shocked if you find 10 of these people in your life you are the luckiest person who has lived don't answer it now answer me when you are 60 years old if you find 10 of this third category of people like ruth to naomi who will say your god will be my god if you fail i fail with you if they mock you they mock us together you may never find those people i pray for you may may that person be your husband or your wife because if if that that category have you not seen husbands that left their wives when there was trouble there was one man who gave birth to six children who was looking for a boy first twins girls second twins girls he said let's try again third twins and he ran away because he could not find. i mean it was on news they had to look for him and see him standing as if he was not the one responsible for the children that's what people do a man can be that self-centered to run away from his own children and his own wife if you learn these three things i shared with you you have mastered people maybe i'll just talk on one more area and then we'll round up this i may stop here and we'll continue um, the next time your understanding about failure mm. make sure you get this you must have an understanding about failure about setbacks about challenges for you to be able to live effectively ready right let's fly on your path to success failures challenges setbacks are inevitable write it down on your path to success you must fail you must have challenges you must have setbacks if you do not know this you will be discouraged you will die champions in life are not people who were not confronted by failures they are those who knew the things that i'm teaching you now your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success write it down your failures are doorways to lasting and sustainable success I want to change your mindset about your failures now i sense god ministering to people very personally because there are lots of people that have failed and you need somebody to explain to you what is happening in your life your failures are what the door the very door that opens you up to success is called failure that's the name of the door if you reject that door, you reject success. I do not know any successful man who has lived 
in this life who has not failed let's see what james told us james chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 write this down while they project that scripture failure is a priceless asset failure is a priceless asset nothing can buy it failure is a priceless asset everyone say it. failure is a priceless asset james chapter one we'll read two to three ready let's read together as projected one to read my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations see he said rejoice the same way you rejoice if somebody gives you a check he says when you fail don't cry rejoice knowing this this is why you rejoice that the trying of your faith work at what patience let's look at verse 4 it says verse 4 please but let patience have his perfect work and then <laughs> read on sorry about the media but you get the point failure is a priceless asset because it teaches you patience there is no other way to learn patience on your path to success number two failure teaches you discipline discipline when you hear people brag and they are arrogant on the path to success just leave them failure will bring them to a point of discipline i guarantee you failure brings humility when you fail on the path to success it brings humility when you hear a man talking around bragging my money my education my this is because they have not failed give them room come to meet them 10 years later and they will see you even as a millionaire and say good afternoon sir and you're like ah, ah my brother what happened to you failure teaching men humility failure teaches you compassion for others because you have a foretaste of how hard it is right the reason why many people are quick to castigate others you are quick to look at a drunkard and castigate him you are quick to look at a lady and say you are a terrible lady you are an embarrassment to everybody is because you have not failed when people fail they develop compassion for others we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities why because he was in every way like us tempted the only let me tell you something about failure failure is a sign that you have started moving to the realm of success you never fail if you are not moving failure confirms that you are moving ah let me tell you something i will never listen to a man who has not failed i don't care what you have accomplished if you have not failed you don't have a message for me you don't have the balance failure gives you balance people who have never failed are arrogant when you see somebody just comes into the anointing you hear him talk god forbid can you imagine i'm embarrassed i don't know why pastors don't have a crowd i mean in three days we have grown from two people to 20. just let him continue don't tell him anything continue you come back after one year and you say i don't know why people will trust you today and next week they won't trust you again failure is teaching him a good lesson at the end of three years he says look it doesn't matter how crowd or no crowd serve God failure has taught him look at the transition from a pompous and an arrogant person to a disappointed fellow to one who has stepped into it Micah chapter 7 verse 8 is an encouragement for someone rejoice not over me my enemies though I fall yet I will rise again we hate failure because of the mockery that comes with it. We hate failure because of the embarrassment that comes with it. Now listen, this failure I'm talking about is not just failure caused by witches and wizards. This is 
a necessary and sufficient condition for you to become successful. You must fail. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. He says, when I fall, what will happen? Everyone prophesy to yourself, I shall rise. Say, when I fall. He never said, if I fall. He never said, if I fall. He said, when I fall, I shall rise. He said, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I like to see people who have failed in life. They are the ones who are champions. Failures and challenges are only indications that your current level of understanding has reached its limit and you will need to upgrade. Hear this. Your failure in life is only showing you that the principles that you know have exhausted their validity and can no longer take you beyond that reach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you fail, it's a sign that what you know, what you understand, what you believe has reached its limit. Meaning you will need another kind of knowledge, another kind of understanding to pick you and continue with you. That's what it means. Failures are the ultimate motivators for success. Oh, how true. Nothing motivates you to succeed like failure. Failing will motivate you more than counseling. It will motivate you more than encouragement. When you fail, in that cave of Adullam, like David, there was a time David ran away from Saul. You would have called him a failure when he sat down at the cave of Adullam. It was at that point, certain things began to happen in his life. Is God speaking to us? Failure prunes and edits your relationships. You never know who people are until you fail. Failure edits your relationships. It takes away psychophants from your life. It, 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 it leaves the remnant in your life who love you truly for who you are. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you something. Failure has monetary value. Failure is that needed. In itself, you can become rich by failing. There is a level to which you fail so much in life. Your failure becomes the testament that helps other people to jump that path and they will pay you for it. So your failures are not a waste. Remove the shame, the stigma, and the embarrassment that come with failure, but treasure the experience. Is God speaking to us tonight? Take away the shame. I know that failure comes with shame. I know what it means to organize a program and publicize, and in your vision you saw an overflow. But then, Two hours into the program, that's when the 11 person comes into the meeting. It may look like failure, but at that point, it can give you an opportunity. Remove the shame. Remove the embarrassment. Take away all those things, but preserve the experience. Because the day a crowd comes, you will glean from that experience to become your instrument of thanksgiving. When you see preachers roll on the floor and thank God, they know what God did to them when no one was watching them. Are you getting the point now? Yeah. How do you deal with failure? Number one, never be ashamed of it. Don't let any man make you ashamed of failure. Honest failure that happened on your path to success. No. No. Learn from them and rise to a realm of success learn from them you never conquer failure until you learn the lesson from it if you do not you will keep repeating it for ages you conquer failure when you receive 
failures listen listen to me watch this watch this let me tell you something failure is like a parcel from the gate of success to your current level a parcel contains a letter in it that letter is the secret to your continuity in that part but it comes as failure just like you send a messenger with a letter when you open it you will see in it the secret to continue your journey failure is like a compass it has in it a road map and a compass when you get to a point in your life where you fail check well there is a parcel open it up and it will tell you turn left and you begin to move and you continue your journey you can ignore the parcel out of shame and you never will get to the place of success one scripture and then we'll run away but let me just give you two scriptures job 14 from verse 7 to 9 the bible says there is hope for a tree oh i bring a message of hope for people who have failed there are people who have really failed there are some people who probably wrote jam or wrote post ume or wrote other things there are people who may have to spill over stay an extra year there are those who have finished you graduated you paid the price but there is no job all these things look like indications of failure tonight i want you to go to the treasure where you keep the most valuable things in your life and pick your failures and add it to your treasures otherwise you are missing a lot don't throw your failure away it's a priceless gem media please give us amos chapter 3 verse 12 let me give you two scriptures job 14 7 to 9 and then genesis 50 verse 20 remember what joseph told his brothers he said you meant it for evil but god has turned it around for my good for the salvation of others in other words you wanted to sell me out of jealousy it doesn't matter what made you fail it may be your personal cause it may be envy it may be whatever it doesn't matter verse 12 okay we have it now read this very interesting scripture he said thus saith the lord this is a message of hope for somebody tonight as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of ear look at this a lion has devoured a sheep to a point that it ate the whole body all that was left is two legs and ear. Yet the shepherd still fought to recover it because he still felt that there is still hope for that sheep. This is what the Bible is saying. He said, in the same way, a shepherd, by the time it has eaten the stomach down to everything, there is no life again. But the shepherd said, I will not give up on this sheep. This sheep can come back. Because if you can have an ear to hear the word, faith comes by hearing and if you can have your feet to take steps of obedience there is no situation that cannot change it says the same way a shepherd you would imagine that after a lion has devoted that's the apex of failure at the mouth at the eyes at the heart at the lungs and the shepherd said i know that there are only two legs left and one ear that's all I need to get that sheep back. And here to hear the word of the Lord and a feet to take steps. If you can continue the journey and not give up, you will arrive. Hmm. Who is God speaking to tonight? What brought you to give up? You started very well simply because you did not see results. Many of you are about to give up. I know that you have 10 carryovers right now. You are even on probation. You are on your way out. You are not as bad as this. But they said the shepherd will not give up. Who is God speaking to? You have written jam for seven times. Everybody around you is telling you, your God is not alive. This your Christianity thing is making you an idiot. There are people who even think it is because you are spiritual that you are failing. Just allow God to finish what he's doing in your life. When he beautifies you, when he adores you, when he makes a masterpiece out of you, then men will know that the rejected stone, while you are paying the price, they will laugh at you. Don't worry, don't hate them. While you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, while it looks like the sun will never shine, I want you to know that if there is night, 
there is day it says and the evening came and the morning came if you see the evening they were tied together you can't see evening without morning if you see evening it means morning is on its way coming he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny he'll lead me and guide me to the city of papa he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny listen your failure is your passcode to enter the gates of success when the gate is about to open it to say show me show me the code and you say see my scars there is a scar i didn't just come i cried i had times of discouragement i had times when i never thought the sun would shine but here i'm standing i almost gave up I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see That's what God is speaking to someone here My problems held me down Depression But he kept me So I would let go 37 years And they've told you, madam Better just go and get pregnant and have a child At least Listen, change your interpretation about failure. Tonight, as you pray, thank God for your failures. It's made me wiser. It's made me better. It's made me understand people. Now I can reach out to others and say, Sam, you can make it. You are not the only one who is there. When David was in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says there came to him people who were weak, people who were in debt people who were depressed and he made warriors out of them it's in the place of your failure some of you will get your husband you will get a godly man because there is nothing to desire from you and somebody comes genuinely run away from people who show you success without failure the next time you see a great man beg him to show you his cars not his crown his cars the symbol of royalty in the school of greatness is not crown. Crown is an evidence to followers. Leaders lead with scars. They lift up their clothes and say, see my scars. There were times I was tightened for years. It looked like the heavens were closed. Nothing was working in my life. Let me tell you. I've told many of you about my situation. The first crusade we went for, we were few. God did great things. We were few. We were in debt, but there was an anointing. I would have given up and said, God, please. Today, you are benefactors of endurance, a product of pain. Listen, I bring a message to someone. You want to live effectively? Master the art of enduring pain until you overcome. You can weary pain. You can weary failure. Failure can salute you and say you qualify to pass. Are we together? I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on. You went to lay hands on a sick body and they embarrassed you. They drove you out of a house. You went to pray innocently. Your word of knowledge was not correct and they drove you out. They called you a false prophet. Don't worry. You know you are real. Just leave. They can embarrass you. Just go. You took your CV and they sought that class and they insulted you. They say all these prostitutes that roam around university and buy certificates. No problem. Just leave. A day will come. It will be a privilege for them to shake your hands. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Listen. In Koinonia, we don't run away from people who have failed. This is a place where there are pastors who run away from people who fail. When a drummer cannot play drums well, he says, drive this guy out of my church. Go and look for somebody in Lagos who can play and then bring the person. Right? There are pastors who cannot train people who have failed to become great men of God. We want ready-made. Great leaders are those who can endure and make wonders out of failures. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of people you would have thought they would fail. Right here in Koinonia, there are people who have gone through things that it looks like the morning will not rise. I'll never forget one of our own here, Mama. I remember when he was disowned by his family on account of his faith. Disowned completely. They drive you and say, that's it, go. Live your life. I remember him coming and smiling. But today, look what God has made out of his life. And on the start failure today, has become an instrument for his anointing. That failure today has become an instrument of his grace. Sister, you don't have to give yourself cheap because of failure. Go through it. Pass through it. There are some cops you will never pray them away from your life. I promise you. Master or Father, if it be thy will, take this cup off me. And God says, uh -uh, you must drink this one. If you want to stay near me, you must drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism. There are some things you can never pray away. You pray for grace to pass through them. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, it will not overwhelm you. He said, when you walk through the fire, you will run. While it is burning you, you will walk through the fire. He says, I will be with you. Have you walked through fire enough to have compassion for people? That's the reason why when I come in and I see people seated outside, I, I, I see people standing in the rain, my heart is grieved because I know that I do not even, based on human parameters, I should never be trusted with people like this. I don't just walk around bragging and saying, this is the man of God, all of you shift, you came late, sit down outside. It's, no, 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 no. It touches my heart. Many times you see me sit down and I bend my head. Many people don't know there is a very soft side to me. Many times I'm fighting tears when I see what God is doing. I come for the miracle service and the testimonies from one region over the other. I know where God brought me from. If I never failed, I would have been an arrogant person. Not with the kind of anointing. I had to fail to manage this kind of anointing. It takes failure. To have this kind of anointing and still respect people. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why there are many young ministers moving around. Bragging and moving. Just don't try to pray for them. Just leave them. If it is that gate, I promise you. You must pass through the door of failure. Expect people to laugh at you. It's normal. They laugh at you as a consolation to their failures. Because they have refused to move forward. Whenever they see you trying... They are intimidated. So when you fail, it's a comfort to them. And so they will amplify it so that they can derive joy that it is not doable. But when you smash that record, them together with the world will stand in ovation. The reason why you reward great men is not just their result. You, they are testaments of endurance. They have gone through what people have never gone through. If I never failed, I will not know how to fast. There are times in my life I fasted dry for days because I needed to knock on the doors of heaven. It's not just that I just love God. Situations push me like the cave of Adulam. We are going to pray. You want to live effectively? You must have an understanding about the gift of failure. The gift of life the gift of people the gift of failure listen I want you to go back home and strangely thank God for the gift of failure some of you the only nobody knew that you would humble yourself and come to church because you used to take first position in secondary school when you entered 100 level you were bragging around five carryovers bam 
two carryovers, bam, oh God, I need you. And you came. Your failure has brought you to a point. Let's look at Genesis 50, verse 20, and then we'll just pray. I know our time is gone, but this is a very important message. I have one more, but we'll take that another time. Your understanding on greatness and success. Genesis 15, verse 20. This is what Joseph told his brothers. Look at me. This is what you will tell everybody mocking you today when you succeed. You don't have the evidence to talk to them now. Don't bother defending yourself. Let them call you names. But Joseph told his brothers, he said, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Sister, your disappointment is because there is a mantle upon you. It's not beans to be a woman of God. That guy walked out on you. Everybody insulted you. Just continue loving God. A day will come when somebody runs to you and says, Mama, can you imagine what happened to me? You will start crying and say, I remember this pain. I have it too. I went through it. Those who cannot counsel people are those who don't have their pain. Their compassion is the capacity to be touched with the feelings of infirmity. There are others, for instance, who say, why waste time on people? Why waste time? Leave them alone. It's because you have not failed. When you see us, I wait after service, no matter how hungry and tired I am, to see people. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I'm responding to calls. It's because I know what it means to cry and nobody answer you. I know what it means to turn to your father and he says, I'm disappointed, you don't have a future. Like they've done for some of you right now. Some of you, you are sitting down on your own. Nobody believes in you. I'm telling you, Koinonia believes in you. I believe in you. Yet I don't care what is wrong in your life. If you have an ear and you have two legs, oh, you can come back to life. After the dust settles, they will see a giant imagine. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus every day. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. Is a complete translation so every other thing you do is in support of that understanding demons are real let me tell you you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives there were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time I tried I did all I knew to do but when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. When men arise to make your life easy, Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person 
and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you, flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take it. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part. Movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore, holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtain a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report. You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. 
God through his spirit will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in, there were people in Abuja, my Bible, uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Abarato so Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward hold on let it come and whatever must leave me i have no loyalty to you i don't care where you came from tonight i part ways with you forever lift your voice and pray anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are.
Yes, oh God. I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are at in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every song shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me. I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories, 
That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you, but your family. Are we together? And once that happens, know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives, change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shaka patakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now, inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside outside is over is over is over is over i come with a word of prophecy i prophesy as i've been commanded miracles deliverances for families enough is enough oh god bring them there are so many people outside so many people outside all the overflows i see miracles it's like fire it's like fire hallelujah keep your hands down i'm seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people and the lord is saying it is still the deliverance lord where are they where are they where are they right now all over the congregation i prophesy it like fire i see like an eruption a volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people the heads of people shake it where you are the fire will meet you there where you are where you are The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances, eating up joy, eating up peace. Kapatatata, ekerato soto basiata. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars. 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 At the count of seven. I tell you many people. This is not just families now. One. Two. Three. Four. Get ready. Five. Six. Seven. Right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars catch fire. Altars catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, Three, go, go, go. Failure, failure, failure. Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries. Failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure. Fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Parato soto peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. 
please take this prayer seriously it will do wonders in your life lift your hands inside and outside and you watch what will happen now Lord, I pray. My God, I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now. Right now, right now, release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation. I cause it now. I cause it now. I cause it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sisters lift your hands. I want to pray. A very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer. To get one woman. To ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Tapataya. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny. 
to fail a programming to be barren who is this god that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three may the power of god fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it, take it, that fire, help them please, help them, my goodness, brothers are coming under this unction, it's time to move forward, it's time to move forward, help them, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, hallelujah God does this all the time and I don't know why God is doing this again <laughs> ah. if he did it before he can do it again Sing. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east get set be sensitive come on you shouldn't be doing that shaparatoka paratia east lord wherever they are it will come like fire on you you will be surprised to see what will happen to you now the spirit of god goes to the east the spirit of god goes to the east and is bringing deliverance deliverance strange deliverance evil people strange deliverance by the power of the holy ghost is visiting your soil visiting your foundation
visiting your soil. If it did it before, it can do it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If it did it before, Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna, connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. Listen, let me tell you, this operation of the spirit, I found it working in my life, is powerful. God just calls a territory and everyone is like a digital spiritual system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. It's the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state. hallelujah please lift your hands while still praying I want to pray for students now something miraculous will happen here now I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances 
I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. CGPS by the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally, by the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, it in the spirit. for you for your loved ones I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion, whoever is sitting on their promotion, the judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But, um,
There are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God, please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out, out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, we have such people. We have to be fast. If I mention your case, once we give you one minute, there's no response. We have to move so that God can help us. Please. Except if they are outside there, then that's all right. A married woman that need the fruit of the womb, we have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is stand up. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came and you decided to. Where is your husband? Okay. okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I This God, ba. Let me tell you, that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? 
Give her the mic. Ten years. How many years? Ten years. Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. You want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers, Kabataya. What God has joined together, I'm prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are put in a stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Or oh, cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Change my destiny. Destiny. destiny today. Destiny changer. You are a destiny changer. Oh, my change my destiny. My destiny hold on. today. Please don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in Azarembochi. Kiki Amata. Is that the Sam Yembu? Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? You hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. 
Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on. Not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21. And this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, every thing that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach for every lady here and those watching online I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus my dear look at me hold that baby you Ejimi, please give her that child just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle for this miracle for this miracle that is sir please let me talk to you just give a few minutes you and the madam close to you mommy please come you are an usher but you are praying come let God answer your prayers this lady is talking to the Lord what was the issue it's my sister you are asking the Lord to do what? Later, she has put to bed feet time, but none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit, as soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope, it eats the children. As in, it's the child, sometimes most of the children will grow, nine months you give birth, then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry, don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Ladi, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor, Victor, Victor. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job, the one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So yes. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Who is non so? Nonso, Nonso, I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso, Mama, we are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry? 
planning for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. True. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, you bend down to wash and your back is pain. Yes, Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help, Mama. You, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Please, don't, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Who should help him now? <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school, I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? Yes, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Die to destiny. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. Yes, yes. And when they, you know, they want to, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam State. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Chidi? I'm hearing the name Chidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Um, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that he's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking house, sir. It's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, that he's going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get you something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in Brazil. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes, From where? 
Zaria, I said, Sam, Father John, but well, since you have come out, let me pray for you. Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. Please. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? Please, when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because, you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I help, sir? Eh? Yes, sir. Okay, Turan Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. Upon me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. And um, this thing started happening to you since Tun you were about 17 years. Yes. About 17 years this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate Over my finances, over every area of my life, be open now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Prayer point number two: I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, 
I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Inside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, 
Abba now. Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. September. September. October. October. November. November. December. December. Hear my voice. voice. I I speak to you. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. Only no, pain, no pain. No sorrow. No, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth. You shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November, December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Abala Kotaya. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. A covering, a covering over me, over me and, my and my family members wherever they are the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy listen I shared some months ago hold on I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me I'm not one person who will stand and say I saw this sometimes I see these things I just pray but it was upon my spirit and I said it Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking, but you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood. Is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident, no death, no obituary, no plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs, turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your prayers be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children, some for breakthroughs, some for study um, scholarships, others for help, others for reconciliation, others for souls, others for financial prosperity and breakthrough, others for restoration, some for deliverance, others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. On every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand. Between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. 
Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next, next month miracle service, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring results, bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place, that you have done everything to do, including giving money to people, and they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake every mountain, I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you the grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life. It works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus in a way you have never seen favor and help. May you experience that throughout the month of September. Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus receive wisdom in the name of Jesus and I pray for you everything that needs to be broken in your life habits and encumbrances that tie you down I command that today is their barrier today is their barrier today is their barrier I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify I curse that spirit right now 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 Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You will try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, 
may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. Right? And then he said, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor. The spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity. Not by walking it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place, uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, ah, we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know, God has lifted us, you can imagine the things that have happened, and they said, which laptop are you buying, and all of that, and I looked at them, I had to just run away and go out, because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business, they carry something that is so costly, and key. let me tell you, honor is more than money, oh. don't be deceived, money is very finite, Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you. The true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know. The devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble. You pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive that mantle of honor. Receive that mantle of honor.
keep standing everybody i want to make an altar call now please no moving around let's honor what god is doing no sitting down just five minutes and we're done thank you so much for your patience we stretched the time quite um but i think that it's worth it if you pay that much price and you come back with tears some testimonies it's a wise baguette there are still people under the anointing god is still doing things and even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Palana Bakasuchiata Palana Bakasuchiata Keep coming Palana Bakasuchiata Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god so that you are here in his presence some of you are rededicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for this ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.